I told you guys that I would get on camera when I feel compelled and I feel compelled today because I have read the best books ever as of recently. So I wanted to sit down and try and convince you bitches to read these books if you haven't already. This is going to be kind of like a reading wrap up, but I'm only going to be mentioning the books that I've been obsessed with with. These romances that I'm about to talk about have become my all time fucking favourite book and I really want to share my thoughts and feelings and emotions with you bitches like I used to. Books. Romances. Baby Boo. I have been just in an alternate reality. Okay, we're living in the fictional world and it's been the best fucking time of my life. <laughs> I have been reading so much and it's been so amazing um, considering the past couple of years has been a slumpy shitty ride that we're not going to acknowledge anymore. New year, new me bitch. It has felt like a millennia waiting for a new book from Carrie and Cole, right? We know over here on this channel that Carrie and Cole writes fire romances, the most amazing age gaps. They're super taboo, but she does it in such a beautiful way way like they do not give you the ick whatsoever i've been waiting <laughs> for something new from her for a while and recently she released the lovely return here's the paperback i'm halfway through annotating it i have read it because i got the arc of it um and then i bought the paperback straight away and said to myself bitch you need to highlight but i haven't finished annotating <laughs> Because what happened was I opened back up the arc and all my highlights were deleted like they were gone So I'm thinking maybe you can't highlight arcs. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. This story is Phenomenal, okay Everything you can expect from Karen and Cole is in this novel right here I don't even have the words. It's got one of my most favorite tropes ever in this story so the lovely return is about a man who loses his wife in a car accident and he's going through the grieving process he's a hot mess man this this woman was the love of his fucking life like ride or die love of his life he'll never fall in love again and then time is going by when a little girl who lives in the same neighborhood whose birthday is the same day as the day that his wife died ends up coming into his life unexpectedly and spends a lot of time with him. No ick guys. Okay. When I say that it's not like a grooming situation because I did post a video on TikTok and on here, like a YouTube short about the lovely return. There was a bunch of comments saying like, oh, grooming, fuck off. Okay. Fucking fuck it off. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like age gaps that are set up like this, then just get out of the way and let the rest of us enjoy them. No shame here, baby boo. There's no ick. There's no grooming. But he does meet her when she is obviously a child. And it's magical. I cried. I was in my feels the entire fucking time. I could not tear my eyes away from this book. It was incredibly written, easy to read, because, you know, Karen Cole does that. There was drama. There was a couple of plot twists that I didn't see coming, which I really enjoy. I love a good plot twist. I feel like a lot of romances these days are missing a plot twist. And, like, you don't need to have a plot twist that has kind of like a, like a thriller vibe to it, but you need something to just get your readers hooked and get their heads fucking spinning. This one was so subtle, but so amazing. Honestly, Carrie and Cole, The Lovely Return, my favorite book of all time. Okay, one of. It's now in the pile of favorite books of all time. A lot of these books I'm gonna mention today are, please read this if you haven't already, Age Gap, Reincarnation, like angsty as fuck. It's very low spice, but the spice that's in the book is really good, like really, powerful when you when, when you read it you feel it because you've been waiting for it uh so it's a slow burn but my favorite type of slow burn i wasn't missing the smart dying for them to fuck i was just there for their like emotional trauma and bonding and watching them evolve and watching the both these characters figure out who the fuck each other are very unique and so good please read it five stars i loved it so much I'll link it down below, baby. Go get your copy right now. I don't actually have the paperback of The Ritual or the rest of the paperbacks of this series, but I recently read this series. And though I love the series, it's definitely not my favorite. And the first book I love. The other two fell short for me, okay? Uh, but The Ritual? Oh, oh, baby boo. Baby boo. The thing is with this series, the reason why I can't like obsess over it like everyone else has is 
because I've read things like the Elite Kings Club, The Devil's Night, all these series years ago, and I feel like this is just kind of similar to those, and I like those better, but The Ritual was the one book out of the series that I've read so far that really hooked me, and I read the entire thing, and I was engorsed, engorsed, immersed, I don't know, I was in it, baby, I was in it, no one could talk to me, and I became obsessed with Riot, Riot, I think that's how you pronounce his name, so fucking hot, man, I was deceased, screaming on Instagram stories, ah, at 3am in the morning, that's the vibes. The Ritual is about a secret society. So if you're someone that likes secret society, enemies to lovers, love to hate, those vibes with like really heavy sexual kinks. Who am I fucking kidding? You've probably read this already. Let's be let's be honest here. It's been viral on BookTok for quite some time now. All the bitches are going cray cray over this. Secret society, they're in college, they're dark romances. Um, and this secret society has a chosen one and each year they go through like a ritual and they get to choose a girl and that's their chosen. It's usually not a girl that they end up marrying. They spend their college years with this chosen one, treating her however they want to treat her. Um, and it's purely a lot of the time sexual based, like they choose the girls they want to fuck and that's pretty much the relationship of a chosen until they have their arranged marriage or whatever. They're the vibes, okay? But Riot, he was so fucking hot. Very possessive, alpha male, like, oh, he was everything and more, and I loved him so much. So, yeah, I really loved The Ritual. Number one out of the series. The rest of them fell short for me. That's fine. They were still good, and I understand why people love them, but The Ritual is the one that I am obsessed with. I need to understand why it took me so long to read this book. I started this over a year ago and it was during that period of time where every book I was picking up wasn't clicking and I was like what is wrong with me what was actually wrong with me was the fact that I became a mum and we all know the spiel I'm not gonna get into it but I decided to revisit this and I'm so fucking glad I did because Say You Swear is my favorite book of all time I love that I have been discovering new all-time favorites it's been such a long time and it's good to talk about books that I haven't already fucking talked about like you know, Off Balance and the Elite Kings Club and all these books, I have been talking about nonstop since I read them years ago. So it's nice to add new ones to the collection. So You Swear is such a magical love triangle. Like, I cannot deal. I love a messy love triangle full of drama. And this was giving it the angst. Oh, Noel Riley? Oh, I would pay money, like good money to have a night with that man. Like, fuck me. So, So You Swear is about a girl who is totally in love with her brother's best friend. And they're spending summer together before going off to college and something happens between them. <sighs> and she gets her heart broken. So when she goes off to college, she's kind of fighting her feelings for her brother's best friend. It's a relationship that can't happen. But as she's falling in love with Noah and discovering this relationship with him and <sighs> is caught up in this whirlwind, she's still fighting feelings for her brother's best friend. And that is all I'm going to say. It is so fucking good. I haven't read a lot from Megan Brandy, Megan Brandy, um, but I will now. I definitely want to go through her backlist. I did try The Boys of Brayshaw Heights years ago, like after I read The Elite Kings Club, I think. Um, and I just didn't click with it. I don't know why. I just think at that time I was reading too many stories that are similar when it comes to tropes and styles and stuff. So I didn't continue on reading it. Now that I've read Say You Swear... I totally get it. <laughs> I totally get the hype around her and I want to read more of her. Easy as fuck to read, man. Like, I flew through this 24-hour read. I was just, oh, book slumped, though. If you're looking for a book that's going to fuck you up and ruin your reading streak, don't fucking read this, man, because you're going to be sitting there staring at a wall for weeks on end until you can muster up the courage to pick up another book because it fucked me man i cried and you know if you've been following me for a long time you fucking know i don't cry over romances like rarely like it's really rare i cry about everything else in my life just not words on paper but this got me man i was fucking blabbering like a baby it was epic like ugh. if i could pay to read say you swear again for the first time you know i would baby boo you know i would after reading say you swear i was like okay this is kind of like yeah it's a sports romance and i really fucking liked it let's try other ones that i have been wanting to read but were hesitant to read because i am not a sports romance girly and one of them is the canary cowards by jesse hall jesse hall is phenomenal i fucking love her man like i love her books i cannot wait for green light oh 
that looks so dark and so good and I'm so psyched to read that. She's just so good, man. Like fresh new plots I've never read before. Fresh new character stories are just so well written. The character development and the effort she goes to to make these books that she writes fucking slap. I can't even imagine because with this one, We've got a physical therapist who is currently taking care of the, and, and working with this client who is a famous footballer and he's done, he's hurt himself, really bad injury and he has to get back on the field. Hate to love, enemies to lovers, really good fucking banter. But the, the side plot to this is so good. She has a autistic brother that she takes care of um, and just the information in this book about autism Wow, I don't know if Jessie has someone in her life who uh, deals with autism, but man, it, it was intense and it was a really good eye opener for people that don't have any experience or knowledge to do with autism. It was so fucking good, man. I loved it so much. It's a big book though, and it was a little slow. It, it's more on the slow burn side, and I don't like slow burn a lot of the time. Um, the, the stories have to be a little bit more than just a slow burn, if you get what I'm saying, for me to be invested in it. Uh, but I did really like it. It was really good. I haven't read anything from Jessie Hall that I don't like. <laughs> She's so fucking good. Hawk is still my favourite of all time. Then I picked up Blindside. So Blindside is very similar to the Say You Swear situation. I started it ages ago when everyone read it and everyone was like, this book is fire. Um, and I just never continued on with it. So I started it after Canary Cowards and also Say You Swear because I was still in my sports romance phase and I really liked it. I did. I don't love it as much as the other books I'm talking about, but it's definitely a fabulous romance, especially a sports romance. I love Candy Steiner. A Love Letter to Whiskey is one of my favorite books of all fucking time. <laughs> that experience was wild and it's like docked in my brain forever. Like I, I think about it. So it's a Roman Empire, that book, you know what I mean? We've got this guy and this chick in college, right? The guy's a footballer, the girl works for the football team in like PR, and the guy's just recently broken up with the love of his life, and the girl has the hots for some guy who doesn't even know she exists. So they decide to fake date to get the attention of the ex and the guy who doesn't know the girl even exists. I knew as soon as I started fake dating, like the first scene that they started fake dating, I was like, oh. Goner. You two are goners. Like, you guys are going to fall in love so fucking hard. It was so good. I was very much swooning. It takes a lot to get me to, like, giggle, kick my feet, close the book, get embarrassed and hide my head and, like, swoon and feel my fucking stomach fly up into my chest. Like, it takes me a lot, but that book did it and I really liked it. Is it my favourite book from Candy Steiner? No, it's not. Uh, but... I understand why so many people love it, and I suggest you read it, especially if you're a sports romance girly. And then we're going to talk about this, because I need to fucking talk about this. I've been reeling. It's been a few days. Yesterday was release day. I was honoured enough to get the ARC. I asked for it, actually, <laughs> which I tend to do, because I'm not part of Ammo's um, ARC team anymore, because I suck with ARCs, so I don't sign up to ARC teams. Anyway, I had messaged her and said, bitch, I can't wait for this, and she was like, um... Where's your arc? Here. So she sent it to me and War and His Queen, the first book in the Elite Kings Club Next Generation, which is, I can't even, Carpe Noctum? Mmm. How's my Latin for ya? Oh my fucking God. Hear me out. Hear me out. I don't like Next Gen. Okay, and I, I'm not meaning to say this to drag authors in the books, and I know these books are loved, but like, Cora Riley's Next Gen. You guys know Cora Riley is my favourite author, and her Mafia world, <sighs> heart and soul, yeah? But her Next Gen fell so flat for me, and yeah, not my favourite. And I had started Rena Kent's Next Gen this year, well, sorry, 2023, last year, I love Rena Kent's books. Like, I read her books, like, the rest of her books around the same time that I read The Elite Kings Club, actually, and I really loved them. And I kind of was disappointed by God of Malice, uh, so I haven't continued on with the Next Gen series. Though, I want to try again. My point of saying this is, the Next Gen of series that I love, I tend to not like. So, Warrior's Queen, I was so fucking nervous about. The Elite Kings Club has my heart and soul. It's one of my favourite series. Like, the top tier shit, right? I was obsessed. I read all of those books except for Santi Diabolo Part 1 and 2 because they weren't released at the time. 
within like a three day time frame. Like I think I called in to work. Like I lost money that week just to read them. I was obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. I had read Sicko and then I had read that and then I fell into Ammo Jones's books and it was just this whole thing. I have so much nostalgia around that time of my life. It was just epic, man. Discovering her for the first time, I hit her up in the DMs and I was like, bitch, like you are insane. So knowing that she was coming out with the next gen got me so fucking nervous. I was like, oh my God, what is this going to be? How is she going to do it? And the way she did it is fire. So amazing that I don't even care if I don't see the parents in the books because I'm invested in the children because that's the thing with next gen, you always want to see more of the parents because you're so obsessed with them than the new characters, the children. With this, I just wanted War and Halen and I wanted to see Priest and Faden and Stella and River. I wanted to see them all. I wanted to know their stories. They're dark, baby, darker than the Elite Kings. I love how it feels like the Elite Kings world. It does. But the story is so different. It's so different. Time has passed and it feels like time has passed. Things are different. These are new characters, a new generation, and it feels like that. War is Nate and Tilly's son. And Halen is Bishop and Madison's daughter. And they are epic. <laughs> so dark. A power couple. They both have big egos. They're both confident. They are sexy as all hell. War is definitely so much like Nate. It's a little bit taboo and forbidden because it's brother's best friend and they have this pact not to fuck each other. Uh, twists and turns. The same Ammo Jones bullshit that we all love and are obsessed with is in this book. The vibe was just next level. If you come across any like edits on Instagram, like I shared one the other day on my Instagram stories and I was like, this is what it feels like when you read this book. Just mind-blowing. The creativity. I can't gush about it enough. I love it so much. I have been in a book slump ever since. It's been a couple days. And all I can think about is the Elite Kings Club, the next gen. I've even opened up Malum Part 1 and started rereading it just for shits and geeks. Like, I'm not seriously sitting down reading it. Like, I'm just kind of flicking through it because I'm in the world. Like, I remember finishing Ruin Castles and I cried. And I was like, wow, I can't believe it's the end of this. The end of this whirlwind of emotions in this world and when I opened up War and His Queen man I felt like I was back there but new and different I felt like I was home but it was a different house you know what I mean a different house I was home but in a different house and it was so fucking good five stars baby you're gonna love it the reviews are fire I think it's one of the best things that Ammo has ever written and that is saying a lot because Santa Diavoli part one and part two I think were the best things she she had ever written I'm excited for the rest of the series. Priest, my God, Bishop Madison's son. I know he's going to fuck on us. He's going to fuck on us. He's going to fuck with us. Ammo's going to fuck with us. This is going to be wild. And I really hope, because I know Ammo can change up her release, <laughs> her release dates and books quite often. I really hope that this year is next gen year, because I could totally just fly through all the books and jack off to them. Honestly, so fucking good. Anyway, you need to read. You need to read. I can't wait for the rest of the books. And when they all come out, I need to sit down and do another Ammo Jones video because it's been a while um, and just gush about her again because she's so good. She's so different, man. Like the darkness. And I just love that there's this element of like urban fantasy to her books. I really got into Paranormal last year and I love that there's drips and drabs of that throughout Ammo's books and it's not just like a contemporary romance or a dark romance like it's it's different I don't know where she comes up with this shit, but I want it <laughs> I want to come up with this shit like she makes me want to come up with this shit. She's so amazing I love her. I love her books. Anyway, that is it. They're the recent favorites I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did let me know in the comments below I'll be back when I'm back whenever you know me. I'm working on my things Let me know what I should read next. What are your favorite books right now? Let me know your thoughts on any of these books if you've read them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.